Okay, so let's uh, restart the class. So then, there are uh, many opportunities these days in China, with the economy growing and uh, some space for improvement or development. So these kind of sectors, automo automotive components, cleaner coal, construction equipment, education and training services, machine tools, marine industries, healthcare, water treatment, rail, renewable energy, green building. Actually, China has quite a strong renewable energy business. Yes, yeah, solar and, and also wind and other energy business. Yes. So, so uh, the national governments Policies and regulations of marketing are not as strong as their local counterparts. In China, we have uh, local regulations, national regulations, but the local governments don't always follow the national government, right? Sometimes they can do their own thing. Uh, so we have Hong Kong. Hong Kong is a special economic area in China. Uh, it was ruled by the British, but they had a contract which was they would return it to China. So it's a special administrative region. It means it has its own autonomy. Do you understand autonomy? Autonomy means they can make decisions by itself. So you might know there was recently a lot of demonstrations in Hong Kong. Does anybody know why were they having demonstrations in Hong Kong? Why were the young people in Hong Kong making demonstrations? It was about this reason, autonomy, right? So they, people in Hong Kong can choose their own leader, but uh, China said, now we have to, to, we can, we have to approve the leader. You can choose your leader, but we have to approve them. Okay. But Hong Kong people didn't like this new part that it should be approved by uh, mainland China. Okay, so they had a lot of uh, demonstrations about that. So Hong Kong wants to keep its own autonomy. In that case, it has uh, bilateral agreements which are approved or confirmed and makes major economic decisions on its own. Hong Kong is financial center. Uh, Taiwan and China. So Hong Kong used the Hong Kong dollar. It's tied to the US dollar, pegged to the US dollar, exactly the same. Eight, Hong, about eight Hong Kong dollars is one US dollar. Uh, Taiwan and China also continue to implement the World Trade Organization provisions. Ta Taiwanese companies have invested 50 billion in China. And a quarter of a million Taiwanese factories are responsible for about 12% of China's exports. So trade is, is good for both countries. Uh, Taiwanese companies can get the cheap, cheaper labor cost in China. And also the engineering talent in China. Okay. And the Chinese companies can take advantage of the large market share of the Taiwanese factories. So Japan, Japan's stock market was higher in 1990 than it is today. Okay, Japan had a real estate boom in the in the late 80s, and then it had a crash, and it hasn't recovered well from the crash. According to the IMF, why didn't Japan recover very well from the crash? One reason is that Japan is an island. And instead of closing down businesses, which it should have closed down, which were losing money, uh, because it's an island, there are a lot of people who know each other, right? So they decided not to close down the businesses, and they kept these non-performing businesses that should have been closed down alive. So they wasted a lot of money on keeping these kind of businesses alive. They should have shut them down. Okay? 
Pro probably because these person people were like insiders. Do you understand insiders? They had some special connections or that kind of thing. So anyway, just recently, in the last couple of years, we have the economics. The Japanese economy has, uh, the stock market has increased, right? The Japanese currency has gotten a lot weaker. But Japan is trying everything to grow its economy. It's not easy for Japan to grow its economy. Japan has a massive debt, the highest debt in the world. Japan's debt is about 290% of GDP. Korea's debt is about 40% of GDP. Okay, so this is uh, not a big problem for Japan because it's mostly held by Japanese people. So the Japanese people will accept a very low interest rate. Okay, so the interest rate on this debt is you know what about one percent or something like that. Okay, so. They're paying just one percent of the Japanese people who own the bonds. Not that good for Japanese pensioners. Not a very high income for them. Okay, but this kind of debt is also holding, uh, slowing down Japan. Older population. Japan has an aging population. Uh, high proportion of pensioners compared to people in the workforce. Okay. So it had faulty economic policies. <coughs> Bad political apparatus, some disadvantage in the global circumstances, and some cultural inhibitions to change uh, in Japan. So, Japanese population is shrinking. Okay. So, in 2005, the baby boomers making were making a lot of babies. Uh, the Japanese were about 10 years ahead to population declines and graying hair. So sometimes we can look at Japan as what could happen in the future in Germany, in Italy. They have quite old populations. Germany are quite worried about their old age population these days. Okay? Korea also is getting an uh, older population. Okay? Also, Japan had a disadvantage in the information age because their alphabetic system is not that good for software innovations. Okay? They use the character character system, right? See, can you understand Japanese characters if you understand Chinese characters? Even if you don't know what it means, you know the character in Japan. Okay. Uh, so Japan uh, has some problems with uh, in the U.S. car market. Toyota had to recall some cars. There was a trend in the US to buy SUVs. Do you understand the SUV? The big vehicle which has six seats or so on. But the Japanese companies didn't take advantage. So, <coughs> Japan did very well they, after World War II. They built themselves up very quickly. But nowadays, they seem to have a lack of a national goal or vision. Japanese culture is not really adapting or changing. They have this uh, lifetime employment. It's called a salary person. They stay in the same job all their life. Job promotion is not based on merit. So the youngest person who's doing well doesn't get the promotion. Instead, the older person who's been there for a long time can get the promotion. Okay? Uh, Contractor, subcontractor loyalties, so they will do business with somebody even though it's bad for their company because they're loyal to that person. The relationship is more important, right? So even though this, this guy costs more and his product is less quality, right? Well, I know him. He's, I've known him for 15 years, so I'm going to do business with him. So this is why it's very difficult for foreign companies to break into the Japanese market, okay? Japanese system of loyalty means it's hard to get the Japanese uh, customer to change their supplier. Okay? They're used to this supplier, they're used to this person, they have a relationship with them. Okay, your product is better, your product is cheaper, but loyalty is more important to me. Okay, so this might not be the best for economic growth, 
right? We want the best people. We want people to be promoted on merit, to get the best people in the best position, okay? If somebody comes out with a new innovation, which is cheaper, I should be able to switch, switch my provider, okay? People should be able to change jobs if they're not happy or they think they can use their ability better in another job, okay? So, this is a kind of cultural issue. Uh, then India. So India has privatized a lot of state-owned companies. Uh, state-owned enterprises is SOE, so they demolished the monopolies, the state-owned enterprises like telecoms and so on. Uh, they signed a trade agreement with the US. Do you understand quantitative restrictions? Quantitative means quota. You can only export so many pieces of clothes. There was this problem with China three years ago in the EU. By October, China had already hit its quota of clothes. So they weren't allowed to send any more clothes to the EU. But they quickly renegotiated and they made a new quota. And then they were able to send the clothes to the EU. Uh, so these kind of things like phone services, housing, Trading sectors is open for the FDI. So India is still a little bit difficult. Tariffs are quite high, so you want to sell something in India, they're going to put a tariff on your product. The intellectual property is not well protected. We talked about the pharmaceutical companies uh, lost the case in India, right? So the Indian company can make the same drug that was developed in Switzerland, right? Uh, India's courts, more than India's government, India's courts have a history of thinking about society. So there was a, a case in India where the government had a food program for the kids at school. The government was giving food to the kids at school, right? And then the government decided to cut back on the program, to stop doing the program or give less, right? So, the court, this case went to court, and the court decided against the government. The court said to the government, no, you have to continue this program. Okay? So, there are many cases in India. India's court system is famous for trying to socially protect the people, even going outside their job as lawmakers, because their job is to enforce the law, right? They even go, the Indian courts go outside their job as enforcing the law in thinking about uh, society. So the intellectual property, they might think about society more than your business. Okay? Uh, there is some anti-business attitudes in India, anti-US, anti-capitalism, okay, that kind of thing, which goes through to the governments. Uh, <coughs> like in Japan, we can see that some companies are not being dealt with properly because they have some insider connection, right? So the government don't sell the money losing state owned enterprises because their friend is the boss of the company, something like that, okay? They need to make their labor laws more flexible and deregulate banking and also we have corruption and bribery. If we check Transparency International, we can see there's some issue with corruption and bribery. But well, India also has a lot of opportunities. It has one billion people, cheap and qualified labor, knowledge of English. So the UK colonized India. So Indian people have their own, I think, 57 different languages in India. But normally they use English to communicate. Okay. Uh, a lot of the kids go to university, right? So we have 250 million educated middle class, mainly college graduates and so on. Information technology, supplier and exporter. When I was working in the US, the IT department, about half of them were from India, Indian consultants. So the consultancy company in the US, in the US they have some special visa for some type of job that they don't have enough qualified people in the US, right? Like web design or something like that, right? So the consultancy company can get this visa, hire people in India, take them to the US. Also, they can just 
hire people in India to do the job, right? You, if you want to do web design from Korea, you can hire somebody in India on, over the internet, right? They can do that kind of job. So it costs, you know, $10 an hour for a computer programmer or web designer in India compared to $40 or $50 an hour in the US. Uh, the time zone is quite, if India is quite similar to the EU. <coughs> then we have the Asia Pacific Trade Association. So, uh, do you know the Asia Pacific region? Do you know where the Pacific is? How do you say Pacific in Korean? Okay. So, uh, countries in the Asia Pacific region are now seen as viable markets. If we think about a company like country like Vietnam, right? Vietnam is growing.